Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. This is Carly. Um, I am making dinner right now. I'm always making dinner, I swear. I'm cooking constantly, but tonight I am doing um, griddled onion burgers with a garlic and Dijon aioli. So I thought I would go through the recipe with y'all um, just in case you wanted to add it to your arsenal of things that you want to cook for your family. Um, obviously, I'm gonna be using some of my favorite products. Um, from Pampered Chef. So if you want to follow along, uh, first thing I'll show you is my flex. Uh, these are the small flexible cutting mats. They come in um, a pack of three. Um, they're all different colors, three different colors. So you do, if you don't want to cross contaminate your food, um, you can make sure that you put the meats on one color and the vegetables on another color so you never cross contaminate. Um, if you notice, I put it right on my counter. It has a grippy back. Even though it looks just like a piece of paper, it's got a grippy back and it doesn't move anywhere. Today, I'm gonna to be using one of my favorite knives. This is my five inch utility knife. Um, if you're looking to get an all purpose knife, this is the best bet for you. This or the five inch Santoku knife. This chops, it cuts, it slices, it teaches your kid how to read. It, okay, maybe it doesn't do that, but you know what I'm saying. It, <laughs> it does all kinds of stuff. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my onion um, to be sliced up. So I'm just gonna cut the ends off the onion with my utility knife. And then I'm going to peel my onion. If anybody has any tips and tricks on how to do this well, <laughs> please let me know, because I've not find, found any hacks that make this any easier for me, I swear. It just, it takes me like a million years to peel an onion. Anybody else have that problem? Or is it just me? <laughs> Which, which is funny because like garlic peels in two seconds when we have the garlic peeler, but onions just take forever. So I'm gonna take this over to my garbage, peel off the rest of the skin here, and we are ready for slicing. Now, um, today I'm actually gonna be using my simple slicer. This is my simple slicer. It is, as you can see, it's a mandolin. Um, it comes with a protective hand cover. This part comes off, so you pop, pop your food in there this part attaches on here. You can use it with the, um, the hand protector or you can use it without. We always recommend that you use it with the hand protector because otherwise you could definitely chop your finger. You can see the blade very sharp right here and I'll bring this over to the camera. Um, this is my thicknesses. This right here, it's locked when it's in this position. If I pull it down one, that's the thinnest setting. Two is medium. And three is thick, and you can see that kind of makes a difference in the um, in the blade. So I am going to be griddling these burgers or these onions to be put onto my burgers. I'm going to go with a two setting, so I'm just going to slide my hand guard on there. I'm going to take my hand guard and I'm going to plop it right on top of my onion and get it in there. Then I'm going to put this on here and I'm just going to slide it back and forth. And out come these fabulous little slices of onion and I'm gonna put these right into my pan and grill them up to put on top of my burgers. And because you use the hand guard, your hand will never come in contact with the blade. You've got a little bit of onion left over. Um, I'm actually going to um, chop this up and put this into my aioli as well because garlic and onion aioli sounds absolutely fabulous. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my griddle pan ready and then we are going to start griddling our onions. So here we are. I've got all of my beautifully chopped onions, super easy with my simple slicer. This is my grill pan and press. Um, obviously, look at that logo, isn't it fabulous? It's Pampered Chef. So this, I've been actually heating in the pan. There's a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. And when I go to do my burgers later, it will cook from the top and bottom. Right now, I'm not gonna use the press because I'm just griddling up some onions. So I'm gonna remove the press and just put it here behind. And then you can see the griddle marks in the pan. This is absolutely fabulous for getting those grill marks on your fajitas or you know, on your burgers, on your steaks, on your chicken. Right now it's raining outside. You probably can't hear it, but it's raining cats and dogs. So that's why I'm doing my burgers in my pan and press today. Now I've got my pan screaming hot. You do not want to cook 
in a cold pan. If you add food to a cold pan, ooh, listen to that, isn't that gorgeous? If you add food to a cold pan, it's gonna stick every time and you don't want it to stick, obviously, because then the cleanup is an absolute nightmare. So I'm just gonna kind of move these around in my pan so that they can all, look at these two are like lovebirds or something. They don't wanna come apart. Let me stay with that guy. Okay, so follow my direction. So you're going to be putting the onions all around here. Now, if you wanted to do a thicker cut of onion, you certainly could do that and you could keep them all together and kind of plop them on top of your burger. I'm not going for that today. I just wanna get a little bit of a, um, a sear on these onions, get a little bit of color. Um, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to them um, and then they will be available to put on our burgers. Sometimes I caramelize them as well. You can add a little bit of water um, and a little bit of sugar at the tail end of the cooking process after they're translucent. And if you do that, then you're gonna get kind of a sweet caram caramelization on your onions, which is also absolutely delicious on burgers. But I'm not doing that this evening because I am doing um, a savory aioli, and I'll show you how to make that in just a few minutes. I am back here checking my onions real quick because they have been cooking as I have been slicing my potatoes. Um, you can see they're starting to get a really nice golden brown color and that's exactly what I want to happen. Um, if, your, um, if your onions are getting too brown, obviously pull them off the heat, but try not to cook on too high of a heat because then they'll kind of scorch. So we're gonna come over here now. I've got my potatoes all seasoned. You can kind of see a little salt and pepper. I'm not going too crazy um, with the seasoning right now because there's gonna be a lot of flavor in the burgers um, and I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna one up the burgers. So this is my large bar pan. You'll see that it is a piece of our fabulous stoneware. Um, I absolutely love our stoneware. I use our stoneware all the time. Um, I just got my new pizza pan, which is freaking amazing. Um, you get perfect crusts, everything cooks evenly, so you don't get cookies that burn on the bottom and then are like super gooey and, you know, all that on the top. Um, so I absolutely, now that's not to say that you still can't overcook something. I mean, like the stoneware isn't like foolproof. You kind of have to, you know, do a good job cooking it because things will overcook, but um, you're not gonna get that uneven cooking because the stone um, really, it, it distributes the heat really, really well so that it is not something that um, will burn on the bottom while this, the other things are doughy. Um, this bar pan is gonna go straight into the oven here. And this is gonna go in 425 degrees um, for, oh, I'm gonna guess, about 20, 20 minutes or so, and these are looking fabulous. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out, and then I'm gonna get going on the next step of my process. So the next step in my process is going to be preparing my burgers. Um, in my, this is the another size of the stainless steel mixing bowl. Uh, this is the medium size, and you'll notice that there's markings on the inside. Again, um, this one goes up to 16 cups or four liters. Um, and I have got my burger in here. I've seasoned it with just a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to go ahead and put some garlic into this because I would like to have a little bit of a garlic in my burger. Um, for that, I'm gonna use my garlic press. If you've never had a garlic press before, holy crap, what are you doing with your life? Come see me, I can help you, we'll talk it out. Okay, so garlic, I've mentioned in other videos. I hate working with it because it's super sticky. It's really frustrating. It's hard to get the skins off. And it's just, it's an absolute wreck of a mess. So my garlic press, um, first of all, this is what it looks like. Kind of looks like something you don't want to see at the doctor's office, right? So um, it has a little, uh, little brush or a little tool right here. And I'll show you how this works in a minute, but the little tool fits right there. So you never lose the tool and it goes all together. Now, here is the beautiful, beautiful garlic press. I take a clove of garlic. I stick it right into the garlic press. It has the skin on it. It has everything on it. I'm gonna go ahead and press the garlic. I don't know if you could see it from there, but all of that beautiful garlic came right out now, I use my tool so I don't have to touch the garlic. I scrape it off, I bring it open, and you can see the only thing that's left there is the skin. 
Now I've got my tool. I put my tool in the back and push up. And here, my friends, is the garlic skin. And it goes right into the garbage, boop, without me having to touch it. I'm gonna do another clove of garlic. That one, I, I like garlic. Sorry to my husband and children. But here is another one that I'm gonna just press in there. Take my tool, scrape off all of that deliciousness. Sometimes um, the skin will actually come right out and that's like the Holy Spirit talking and everything. Um, but when it doesn't come right out, that's when you use the tool to kind of push up on it and it comes right out and right into the garbage. My hands are clean. I have, well, for the moment, because then I'm gonna get in there and get all kind of messy. But my garlic is in there. I'm going to mash up my burgers and then I will be ready to form. Hey, the next thing I want to do in this recipe is press out my burgers because they are going to go into my grill pan and press. Um, this is the burger and slider press. Um, right now it's got the slider insert. And if you wanted to do smaller burgers, you would use that. I don't, so I'm gonna slide that out and put that to the side. And this is where you're going to press your burgers with this. Nice thing about this, you can see the silicone back, very rubbery. Once you get your slider or burger in there, you pop it right out, comes right out. You don't have to oil it or anything. You'll also notice here, there's a little divot there. It puts a little divot in the top of your burger. That helps it to cook and not puff up so much. Um, so it actually stays bun size on your burger. Um, I have my last, um, what is this thing? Oh my gosh, flexible cutting mat. Hello, wake up, good morning girl. So I have seasoned my burger um, and I've just kind of proportioned it out into little balls like this. If you wanna get real crafty and you know, I have about 20, pound, or 20 ounces of uh, ground beef. Um, if you want to get real crafty and you know, put it onto a, uh, kitchen scale or something, go for it. I'm not that excited about that. It takes up time and energy, and I don't have a lot of time and energy. So I went ahead and just put one in there. You can see the little divot on the top. I'm going to flip it over, bloop, and there it is. You can't really see it, but you will in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and do my next one. Plop it in there and just push down, pull it out. And there's my beautiful burger patty. I'm gonna put that again onto my flexible cutting mat. Let's do my next one. Put it in, squish it down. Kind of roll it a little bit so that it, if it's you know too far to one side, then it'll kind of push it to the center. There's my third patty, and I'm just gonna plop it onto my other two happy patties down there, she said, and then it was deciding to give her a pain in the butt. There you are, you crazy little maniac. And here's my fourth patty. And we press it. By the way, all of the things that I have shown you today are all dishwasher safe. So they just go right into your dishwasher and you do not have to worry about hand washing them, um, which I hate hand washing stuff. I'll be dead honest with you. It takes me forever. And half the time I'm lucky if my dishes get done in a night. Cause that's how I roll. You know, some days I'm like, crap, where's my where's my food chopper? And it's in the st sink, yes, but yeah, because I totally forgot to do the dishes the night before. I'm like, where's all the forks? So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt on top of these patties. And then I'm gonna take you over to the pan and press so that you can see how this works. So here we are back over at our, um, pan and press. Um, remember we used this for onions earlier, but I didn't have the press on. Well, while I was forming my burgers, I was heating the press in the pan. So the pan is very hot and now the press is very hot. So it'll cook your burgers from both sides and get those beautiful grill marks. Caution, that bad boy is hot. So please do not grab the press with your bare hand if you have been preheating it, which I know you will because that's what you're supposed to do. But if you preheat it and don't grab a hot pad, that boy, the bad boy is gonna burn you like nobody's business. So don't say I didn't warn you. There's my beautiful burgers. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. Hot, hot, hot pan, baby, and I'll tell you why. First of all, it doesn't stick, but secondly, you get an absolutely gorgeous crust on your burgers. And that crust, woo, yes, 
cook, baby, cook. So that crust is going to give you an extra added bonus flavor to your burgers. All of the greatest steakhouses do it, so that's how we're gonna do it in my kitchen. So we are going to now, while our burgers are cooking, we're gonna give them about three minutes per side. I'm gonna go over and start working on our garlic aioli uh, to put on top of our burgers. So I am making a garlic Dijon aioli to spread on top of my burgers. This is just a little bonus, you know, if you're like a ketchup and mustard kind of guy, that's totally cool, but I'm feeling a little schmancy right now. So in my one cup prep bowl, bowl um, I have a couple of tablespoons of just regular old mayonnaise, um, nothing really exciting. Um, and this is just a couple of teaspoons of Dijon mustard. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in there. Isn't that gorgeous? By the way, I absolutely love like tiny little cooking things and tiny little prep bowls and stuff. Um, this is my mini scraper. Um, another one of my favorite products. It's small enough to go into different vessels and it's just cute and I dig cute stuff, especially when it's small and furry, like, you know, chickens and stuff. So I digress. I'm gonna put a little garlic in here. You've seen the garlic press already, so I'm gonna press my garlic right into my aioli and give it that beautiful garlic flavor. And look, see that? See how that popped out? That right there, my friends, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us, amen. And I didn't even have to dig it out of there and it's all fabulous. Now, I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to give it a stir around. Now, if you like to have a little bit of um, spice in this, you certainly could put a little bit of cayenne pepper or regular pepper, um, anything you wanted, but this is a basic aioli. Um, it's just mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, and a little bit of garlic, and we're gonna spread that on our burgers. Speaking of burgers, I'm thinking I should probably go check out how those burgers are doing. Y'all, it is starting to smell so amazing in here. So I am going to get my hot pad because that is hot, see that? All that, yeah, that's hot. So make sure that you grab this with a pot holder or else forever hold your peace. Look at my beautiful burgers. Now I'm gonna give these a flip. Oop. Look, oh my goodness, see that crust? See all that golden crusty color? That, that's the good stuff, y'all. That is the, mm, that is the good stuff. That's the stuff that takes you to the next level. That's like MVP stuff right there. So that crust that you get is extra flavor. Look at that. So I've got my burgers and I am going to go ahead and with my hot pad, put the press back on. Now, I'm telling you about the press. Notice that I'm not pushing down on the press. I don't wanna do that because see all those juices down there? We don't want those to all escape. If you press down on your burgers, all of the juices run out. If you do that, you've got a hockey puck for a burger and ain't nobody got time for that. Leave the juices in there for the love of all that is good and holy. Everybody, please just, just pray with me. Lord God in heaven, please tell people not to push down on their burgers. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are going to go and get our buns prepped now and then we are going to eat dinner. All right, it's time to prep our buns. You heard that right. Don't change the channel, I'm here all week. So I've got my buns, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm such a child. I've got my buns. Now, yeah, you can slap a hamburger on that bad boy and just, you know, call it a day, but I'm a little bit more fancy and bougie than that. So I melted a little bit of butter and I've got my silicone basting brush and I'm gonna dip that bad boy in there and brush some of that butter. Now, if you wanna get real schmancy, you can put all kinds of seasonings in your butter. Um, you can press some more garlic in your butter if you wanna get crazy with your garlic press. I mean, I party with my garlic press practically every single day, so it gets a lot of play. But, you know, if you're Jones in to play with your garlic press, put some garlic in there. I'm not going to because I actually have some, obviously some garlic aioli that I'm going to be rub rubbing on my buns. <laughs> So um, I'm going to just brush some butter on here. Um, this basting brush um, is made out of silicone, so it withstands lots and lots of heat. You can actually use this um, to baste things on the grill and it will not, I mean, you don't wanna like put it on the grill with your burgers or anything because you might have an accident. 
you'll have one of those cooking failures and be one of those Pinterest fail people. But if you wanted to baste um, some barbecue sauce onto ribs that were cooking on the grill, you could certainly do that with this brush. Um, you can tell that it's not made out of um, like paintbrush material, plastic, or anything that is flammable. So, um, so you can use this on that. And it's also um, delicate enough to brush butter onto pastries, as you can see. So I'm just about done here. So it also has this little hook here on the uh, little on the back, so you can hook that onto your bowl. Um, so that it doesn't, you know, slide into here. We back, are back over at the grill pan and press. You'll notice that I took the press off of it and I've just wiped the grill slightly um, to get some of those brown bits from the burger off of it. It is still a hot pan. I am not going to put any oil in it. There's some residual oil left from the burgers and we are going to grill up our buns. But first I'm gonna check in here. <gasps> Look at you, you beautiful, beautiful beings. Please don't melt my phone. They've got a couple of minutes left. So while we are grilling our buns, those will be finishing up. So I'm just gonna take my buns and stick them right on the grill, pe grill, grill press. I can speak too, I'm a double threat guy. And you just, you don't have, have to turn these or anything. So I like to just kind of press them down. Um, of course you can use the spatula. You know, if you're if you're worried about your beautiful, delicate little fingers, but essentially what we're trying to do is get those beautiful little grill marks. They're already starting. How pretty are you? But there's already butter on the buns. So if you wanted to use your grill press to press these down, you absolutely could. Um, I'm not using it right now because it has some burger funk on it, and I don't want burger funk on the bun. That's why you have a bun. That is the vehicle to get the burger into your mouth without having any kind of funk all over your hands and all of that. So I don't want to mess up my vehicle. So I am gonna go up, uh, go ahead and grill these up and then we will be ready for dinner. The moment has come, ladies and gentlemen, to assemble our burgers. Look at these, aren't they fabulous? A Little bit of butter in the grill pan, absolutely gorgeous. And then we have our burgers. They've got to chill for a little bit, like it's called resting the meat. So the juices, juices come back into the meat. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right on there. I'm gonna take the lid and I'm gonna go ahead and spread some of my beautiful garlic aioli. Now, it depends on your taste. If you wanna go real thick with this, if you wanna do it a little bit thinner, it's totally up to you. Then of course we have our gorgeous onions over here. I'm going to go ahead and put a few of the onions right on there. How pretty is that? And we top that like that. And then our potatoes are done. And look at how beautiful they are. Look at how they're not sticking to that. Oh, look at that one. It's running away. It's trying to save its life. It's too late for you, potato. I'm terribly sorry for your luck. And I'm actually gonna serve this with um, just some crunchy veggies and ranch dressing on the side, something a little easier instead of, you know, cooking more vegetables. So this is it, ladies and gents. This is griddled onion burgers um, using all of the fabulous Pampered Chef products that I have. And I'm gonna go chow down. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.